Dear brothers and sisters of our Savior, let me begin again by saying that I miss the opportunity to gather together with you, to hear God's word, to share in the holy sacrament of communion, and to be church together with you. We do hope and pray that this shutdown will not last too long. Several weeks ago in church, we read the words that Jesus spoke from Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. And in those words, Jesus said some very unusual things. He told us things such as people who are poor in spirit are blessed, or those who mourn are blessed. And in verse 5, he tells us that the meek are also blessed, for they will in fact inherit the earth. Following Jesus' words can be confusing at times, but it becomes easier to follow Jesus when we learn to accept the fact that the Christian life brings many paradoxes. Let me say that again. Following Jesus brings paradoxes. The fact is, we Christians are seen as a bit odd by the rest of the world, for we embrace what the world finds absurd, such as the cross. The world sees the cross as a horrible instrument of suffering and death, and it is. But at the same time, we look at the cross as also the place where God's love shines upon us and this entire world. One of the reasons that I have enjoyed learning about St. Francis during this season of Lent is that St. Francis embraces the paradoxes of following Jesus. St. Francis embraces what the world finds absurd. It's a quality of finding what you're not looking for by searching for the wrong thing. For instance, striving to become the leader and discovering that a true leader is really the servant of all. Or another example is that we grow by becoming small rather than lording it over others. And we receive by giving, not taking. It really is true that we discover a rich life through learning how to give up, or we find true greatness in humility. Other paradoxical traits include simplicity and pardon. Simplicity can disarm cunning and can overcome worldly wisdom, which is really foolishness. Forgiveness and love have the power to sting a wrongdoer and may ultimately transform a heart to goodness. St. Francis taught that we find our true strength, which comes from God, in our weakness. For it is in giving that we receive. Now, we could easily misunderstand or limit our understanding of the above passage. We might conclude that when we give, we begin a chain reaction that results in our receiving something in return. This is the world's rationale. Or again, when we pardon, we're setting a good example, and therefore we might hope that it will be contagious and spark a return. Indeed, sometimes this may be the case. Nevertheless, whether we receive anything back or are pardoned in return, it's actually irrelevant to the greater good of doing the will of God. Sadly, our experience teaches us that our gifts are sometimes spurned, And our forgiveness is um, often trodden underfoot. As bad as that seems, it does get worse for a while because we foolishly translate this into disappointment in others and sometimes in God. We often judge our own uncharitable ways as justified because we gave but did not receive anything in return. But Lord, help us to not think this way. What the prayer of St. Francis is trying to teach us is that when we give of ourselves, We do as God has shown us in the giving of his son, Jesus. And then we simultaneously receive the gift of his son. When we pardon from our hearts unconditionally, we pardon others in the manner God has pardoned us. And so this Lent, a Lent that we may never forget, let us think about how we can give from our hearts without worrying about what we will receive in return. Let us learn to trust God and let us so love, pardon, faith, hope, light, and joy in the midst of this world that is currently frightened, confused, sad, full of doubt, and some despair, and a world that clutches and often hoards. Let us learn to give, and when we do, that is when our hearts become filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, I miss you and I wish you well. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Bishop Abraham Allende, a prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, the Lord's Prayer, and a final blessing. Let us pray. O Lord, may we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those that have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. O oh Lord, as fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. A prayer attributed to St. Francis. O oh Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Finally, let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us all. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.